good morning, Sister Elise good Dorothy. Morning. How are you? Yes, I am fine. Good. Most uh, sisters um, probably remember you as Sister Michael. Michael Elise. Elise. Right. And S Michael from your father. My father. Mm-hmm. And uh, Elise from your sisters. My, uh, my s uh, two sisters, Eileen and Eleanor Therese. Mm -hmm. But she didn't like the Eleanor, and so she says, well, take my second name, Therese. So that's what I did. And then the Michael, I was Richard uh, Michael. <laughs> Here I am again. My brother was Richard Michael, and so I took the Michael from mm -hmm. him when I... Well, going back to Dominican High, mm -hmm. a memory from Dominican High. I loved it. <laughs> That's why I'm so glad to see some of my teachers. Sister Arnold is here, Arnold Benedetta, and she was one of my favorites. She's really, really. You have good taste. <laughs> oh, she really is, though. And she's still the same. She hasn't changed. She hasn't, doesn't seem any older. Mm -hmm. She's friendly, you know. It's really beautiful. I loved it. Is she one reason why you wanted to become an Adrian Dominican? Yes, she was the name I gave to our mother general. They didn't say give me one, but tell me about a sister or any sisters that particularly have influenced you. you know? mm -hmm. And uh, so I said, well, can I start with my freshman year? I said, because my memory isn't, isn't too bad. But anyhow, I explained that I liked that, so I talked about Sister Arnold. Mm -hmm. When I saw her here, she hasn't changed a bit. That's remarkable. I loved it. Well, you probably haven't changed that much either. Really? <laughs> well, I didn't I, know you before. Well, I, I imagine if we asked uh, Sister Arnold, she oh. she would attest to that. Oh. But, you know, I, I never knew you, uh, Elisa until you came here to the Dominican Life Center uh, because you are an island nun. I know. I was <laughs> off the island, yeah, 14, 14, 14 years, I think, something like that. But because I, I, my first visit in the islands was at the Colegio. Sister Mary Fran Coleman? Yeah. Yes, what a dear. She was my superior in principal. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I think she already heard from someone else um, that I had graduated from Dominican High School, and I was—I did a lot of office work, and a secretarial science was kind of a, an important thing for me, you know. But uh, she's really cute. She still, when she greets me, she'll always say, "Hi, Joan Doherty," <laughs> and she tries to pronounce it like I never—I just said Doherty, mm -hmm. you know. But it is supposed to be Doherty, oh. Doherty. And my brother was the one that always was so intent on, on emphasizing what is Irish. And I mentioned that once, you know. So that's why he wanted to help me do the favor, you know. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, following my brother. He was just a younger brother, though. I thought you had a music background. I do, yeah. But because of my arthritis, I kind of lost that. Mm -hmm. But where where did you that gift develop early on in your childhood or Yes, I started piano lessons in 5th grade. And then I went to high school and I had Thomas Gertrude for piano. Oh. Mary lucky Catherine you. Brennan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So from 5th grade on and that was an experience so that from when I was in 5th uh, grade uh, oh. the prince I had the IHM sisters there at Our Lady of Good Counsel. And they said that um, we have a few things we want to talk about with you. I said, oh, don't scare me like that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and they said, no, I, we think it's kind of a nice thing, but all will depend on you and your choices and your agreements and stuff like that. You know? So then you know, she said that uh, we are... Uh, we know that you are t taking uh, piano lessons, you have been, and uh, we have not heard you yet. But the sisters who did said that you have, and, and we called your parents to ask about the interview, and uh, 
They said that we called to find out you know, how interested you would be to talk publicly about that, and then what would you want to do as far as the parish goes? So I said, well, if, as long as you keep me busy, that'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, what we have in mind is because you live on this same street, just in the fourth house and the next block, we need someone who could play the 6.30 mass in the morning. Uh -huh. And uh, people who live too far away, Nod and I, think that you would be able to walk just from your house, which was the third house from the corner. There's an empty lot in the middle. Uh, but we're interested in knowing if you would like to, in addition to your piano lessons, take organ lessons. And I said, oh, when do I start? <laughs> and they said, today, if you'd like. So I did, but it was not so different, you know. I mean, piano, keyboard mm -hmm. is keyboard, and. Uh, but that served you throughout your professional life. Right. Yeah. So the, right away they said, well, well, let's come down tomorrow, and we have a piano and an organ in, in the convent, and let's see what you would like to do. So I did start right away, and wow. So I, my assignment was the 6.30 Mass every day. <laughs> So I played the 6.30 Mass, then went home quickly for some breakfast, and then my mother always stood on the porch. I lived a block and a half off of Six Mile Road where I had to get the bus. And so she always stayed on the porch and waited until she saw me get on the bus. <laughs> So. I'm I'm wondering, once you entered, did Sister Bertha have you labeled as a musician? I don't know. I really didn't have much opportunity to talk to Sister Bertha. Well, she was I think more she was involved in finances and stuff. I think. I think, uh, as I recall, she was very um, influential in sending us places, depending on what our gifts were. Mm. I mean, with I mean, of course, through Mother Gerald. Uh, so, your was your first mission the Clay Hill, the Clay Hill uh, uh, as a nun. Yes, mm -hmm. right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yes. The Did Clay you Hill. use your music skills there? Pardon me. Did you use your music skills there? Oh, <laughs> see, right now I'm uh, my Spanish is coming out <laughs> instead of English. Uh, right away, as soon as I got there, I was. Uh, told that they understand that I've been in music. And I said, yes, I had Sister Marie Rita. She's an IHM sister, and the convent was on the same block. And so she got me interested in playing the organ. So did you do that in um, every day. the Dominican Republic then? Uh, uh, no, well, this was the conversation, yes, in mm -hmm. the Dominican Republic, yeah. Mm -hmm. And Mary, Mary, oh my God, I will give you Mary, she was my superior mm -hmm. there, Mary Fran Coleman. Yeah. And she had already mentioned some of stuff to her, you know, about what I was doing in the music room. I had a choral group of mostly juniors and sisters, uh, juniors and seniors, and I loved that. And the girls liked to entertain, so we gave concerts a lot and sang for activities, you know, in the high school. But I loved it because I I just love music. And is that where you learned Spanish when you were in Santo Domingo? Oh yeah, I did, never knew Spanish, but I had Latin in high school, just two years though. But Latin is so much like Spanish, mm -hmm. or Spanish is so much like Latin. Mm -hmm. I really never found it hard. Were you there during the time of, of the re regime of Trujillo? Oh yeah. Were you in at the convent there? Yes. I was at the Can you tell us it about that? It was scary. That? It was scary. Uh, thank God Mary Fran Coleman was there, you know, because uh, she wasn't afraid to speak to him, but she was. Uh, she had the know-how on deciding what and when would be the best for what he needed and, and for us. But he, he came and visited a lot. He never harmed us in any way, you know. He was a, like a dictator, was he not? Oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Did his, any of his children go to the Colegio? 
his children. They did. They graduated oh. from the Colegio. Okay. And then they went on to Spain. Uh -huh. I think he himself knew that it would be better off if he didn't, if her, his kids didn't stay in the Dominican Republic. But they they graduated from uh, our Dominican high school, and then they went to Spain for a while. Mm -hmm. And I have no idea how. Long. But, what was uh, the disruption that happened in the convent? The disruption in the convent. Uh, I don't think it was anything different from the disruption in any other place mm -hmm. that he was. Uh, I think he was actually looking for money. You know, the, no one ever said that. Mm -hmm. But um, I know he came in at uh, one in the morning uh, through the back doors. The, uh, they broke a window to reach the lock. He had his military people. And uh, I heard the noise. Nobody else did because I, my bed is next to a window and I was on third floor. So I did hear the noise. So I got up and looked down the hall. I didn't see anything and I had thrown on my, my robe. It's so naturally I didn't have a habit on because I was in bed already. Everybody was. So I looked down the hall and I just got to the door the end of the hall to go into the lobby area and somebody kicked the window in next to the door to get in, that was he. And uh, I just said to him, I said, if there's anything you would like to talk about, mm -hmm. I'll, I can get my superior, she's nearby. I didn't want to give him too much information or if it's something simple, <laughs> I said, you can ask me. And uh, so he said, no. he said, well, I, there might be something after that I want to ask you, but I do want to. That's why I'm coming to get Sister Williamine. I said, well, it'll take a little time because she's probably resting for the night. She wasn't. I was the only one still dressed, I think. But anyhow, she, uh, I said, would you like me to go and get her? He said, well, I'll go to the floor, as far as the floor with you, and I'll wait in the lobby, you know. So I thought that was nice. Mm -hmm. So he did that. And uh, it's funny how that is, though, when you, these people do such horrible things. But when you're on a one-to-one, -one, they seem to change. And a, a couple of times I was on a one-to-one -one with him. I had his niece in choral, because I taught music. I had his niece in choral. And uh, he came to our concerts and stuff. You know, he, he acts like just a normal person mm -hmm. at times, you know. And uh, I, I really didn't ever have any one-to-one -on -one political mm -hmm. conversation like that, you know. But um, any time I met with him, it was comfortable and he was friendly. and. He thought a lot of our sisters. He came to our chapel every Sunday for Mass. Oh, my. And, uh, that should be in the history book. <clears throat> that went on for several years. But I know that people started to complain because they were afraid to come to our chapel because they knew that the now um, Trujillo is there. Be before that, he was not coming, but he was now. Well, the difficult thing for Mary Fran Coleman, she d worked well, treated everything. She was always good and thoughtful and everything. But she said what she had to say, and I thought that was so important. And it was for the benefit of all of us, you know. But uh, he would want to go to chapel to Mass on Sunday. Right, well, right. I thought that was beautiful. Yeah. He never talked about mm -hmm. publicly about going to Mass, but mm -hmm. we saw him there, mm -hmm. you know. But um, the only time he asked for something uh, out of the ordinary was a chair in the sanctuary. He wanted to sit in the sanctuary. <laughs> so Mary Fran, I don't remember how she said it, because I wasn't there. 
Um, but she said he won. He insisted on sitting in the sanctuary. So she said I had to explain what the sanctuary is for. You know, you can walk through when you have to, go to the sacristy to talk to a priest, confession, but it had to be a spiritual life situation. And uh, well, well, your life at the in the Dominican Republic uh, schooled you for your many, many years in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, from what I'm aware of, you were at a uh, station at Guatemala. No. Guayama. Guayama. In Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. That's Ponce right. and Ponce. San Juan. Ponce, I wasn't there too long. I mm -hmm. think it was just three years. So but how long Guayama, were you at Guayama? I was there 19 years. Oh. I love that. I've been working. I watched with the Redemptorist Fathers all the years I was in Puerto Rico. And that, that 19 years in Guayama, I was there. And then from there, I went to Mayaguez. The, I was with Redemptors all the time, parish work. And uh, I got involved in school stuff too, but I, my, the purpose was really parish work because I played the organ and uh, taught music, choral and stuff. So, uh, and then after, after that, I went to, um, to Ponce just for a, a short time. I wasn't too interested in Ponce, though. There wasn't too much going on, you know, that was exciting. Were there many of our sisters in Puerto Rico at the time? Um, I was assigned there. Uh, who was it? Sister Genevieve. Yes, it's the one that assigned me there. And um, she told me that they, we would like you to be the principal of the high school. And she said, have you ever been principal? I said, no. I said, I helped principals. I worked in offices, you know, but I've never been the principal. And she said, would you accept it if I assigned it? I said, yes, I would. So uh, she said, <laughs> this part scared me. It was Sister Genevieve that assigned me there. And she said, uh, oh, there are nine sisters, no, six. 19 sisters there. The 19 sisters. She said, yes. She says, I think you will be the youngest one. Oh, my God. I... <laughs> so anyhow, so I went there. And uh, she says, it might be difficult for you, but because of the large number, you know. And so when I got there, I asked about how many are in the high school, how many in the grade school because I was already on my appointment card assigned as principal of the high school. And you were the youngest. I was the youngest <laughs> sister. Yeah, there were 11 sisters, yeah, mm -hmm. 11 sisters. And um, so I was being assigned as um, superior of the community and principal of the high school. And that alone was kind of, but I never felt anything negative toward me for being the youngest one and given those positions, you know. They were really very supportive. And uh, the only thing I didn't succeed in getting them to do was the work that I had chosen besides being principal and all the school mm -hmm. stuff. But um, I had already thought about writing Bible courses and uh, there's a copy here on campus. Is there? Yeah, Sister Roseanne Schlitt has them. And so I started writing Bible courses. and uh, In Spanish? In Spanish. Mm -hmm. Because it was, it was uh, I, I kind of felt I was being sent there, and Mother Genevieve's get as involved as, in anything you would like to do in the religious sense. You may not want an academic subject, but if you do, feel free. Well, what I, I did, I wanted religion because of the Bible courses and stuff. But uh, I got involved in some other religion classes too. But um, I was pretty much uh, concentrating on, on scripture and Bible. So I... Um, I said I would like to do that because it's been a desire for me mm -hmm. for a while, even 
before, when I was still in the Dominican Republic. So she says she can choose to do whatever you like because I was told that you were interested and she gave me all the things, you know. So did you do that through the local parish? The local parish. <coughs> this was Guayama, mm -hmm. where we called the local parish, yes. And uh, I said, well, I would like to talk to the bishop even before I accept the assignment, you know. I said, I'm not that I think he would say no, but I would like to know what kind of a person, what kind of a bishop, and what are his interests, you know. So, so she said, well, you can just arrange that however you like. And she said, I would like you to have a meeting with all the sisters, too, uh, not individually, but, mm -hmm. you know, as a community. And uh, when you decide what you would like to do, parish-wise, let us know. She says, I'm not looking to stop you on anything. I just am interested in knowing what your interests are and what you think you would be able to accept. So uh, once you <laughs> wrote the Bible study book, um, how did that develop in the parish then? Through neighborhood groups or? Oh, yes. <laughs> I surprised myself because I am, um, my lips are so dry, kind of the top. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I already forgot your question. Well, did you have to train uh, men and women from the parish to do this in the neighborhoods? Oh, that's right. Yes, mm -hmm. that's what we're at. Okay, so speaking of Bible studies in the community, first of all, I, I talked to as many as I could on Sundays after Mass. People that I noticed in Masses are, are active in some religious area there. And uh, I heard uh, the, the parents, and I was principal of the high school, by the way. Did I say that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was principal of the high school. And so I already got to know um, what some of the parents are like by hearing their children. Well, the children would say, oh, but all she's doing is sitting there reading the Bible all the time, reading the Bible. <laughs> I said, oh, well, that's nice. He said, I know it's nice, but you know what, what she wants to do? She said, she said that you were talking to some of the other people so far since you've come about getting involved in Bible studies and you were gonna write some studies. And she was looking for, they were saying this, mm -hmm. she was looking for people to be involved and my mother wants to do it. And she's getting a hold of a lot of others that want to do it too. Well, perfect. And then they said, because they've met you at Sunday masses already and they said they really think that it would be nice. And of course they said some other things that I wouldn't want to, you know, it's just that, <laughs> They wanted the change in the church, in the principle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Apparently, there, there was some difficulties, mm -hmm. and uh, when they found out that I was going to be the new principal, too, they, you know, it was a welcoming kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, when you but, finished your uh, ministry as principal, did you spend your time then focusing on the Bible studies with the? with the people? Oh, I did that right away. Right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I, first of all, I asked the permission uh, of the uh, prioress general and superior and so forth, and of the bishop, if I would be able to get involved in Bible studies in the communities, mm -hmm. besides the sisters who already have uh, expressed interest. He said, I think that would be beautiful. He said, if you need any help, let me know. And he was nice any time I wanted him to come for some purpose or activity. Oh my gosh, she came in like a flash, you know. What so. a creative idea, because obviously something very new to the area, correct? Oh, it was, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I continued doing that in all the parishes I was in. It was new for everybody. Mm -hmm. But because I began in Guayama and I had the largest uh, number of people mm -hmm. that I had in any other parish, but it was a, a larger parish to begin with. And because uh, um, 
our my provincial said no my our mother general uh, try to get work on adults and the youth and let the other sisters work with children yeah well that was my intention anyhow yeah. you know did you do that in San Juan also I did some of it just in the mm-hmm. parish where I was though mm-hmm. but I wasn't outside there's still an Adrian Dominican in Puerto Rico pardon me there's still one Adrian Dominican in Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. J- Joyce yeah. Caulfield. Oh. Yes. Right. Yes. I think she works in prison ministry, does she not? Well, she was when I was there, but mm-hmm. I, I thought she had left that. No, she, she's still there. What about uh, women from Puerto Rico who entered our congregation? Were you the their mentor, or are you aware of any of them? any of the young women entering our congregation? Oh, yeah, but I forgot names now. Yes. I, I, Was Rosario? Martin, oh, yeah. Martin. I li- lived with her. You lived with her? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Rosario Martin. Yeah, she's a lovely yeah. woman. Yeah. Roseanne Schlitt, I lived with, too. And, no. Uh, let's see. What about Carmen Joseph Dominguez? I know the name, mm-hmm. but she was at the Colegio before I arrived, so I only heard of her, Carmen Joseph. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't really know her. She came to visit us once, but I, she wasn't one that I had worked with, you know. Mm-hmm. Roseanne Schlitt I had, and uh, Rosario Martin. Um, yeah. If you had a chance to, to send a, a verbal message to the people in Puerto Rico, uh, and please say it in Spanish, what would that be? Say it in Spanish. Say it in Spanish. <laughs> he hablado muchas veces con personas uh, in Spanish, in Español. Y ellos me preguntan mucho um, eh, si lo que yo había uh, estaba buscando, si he encontrado eso mismo durante mis años en Puerto Rico. Because they, me dijeron que siempre di la impresión que, que era una persona bien feliz en todo. Me dijeron que está contento cuando está trabajando con adultos, cuando está trabajando en la liturgia, cuando está dirigiendo la música, tocando el órgano los domingos. Siempre muestra una felicidad haciendo lo que está haciendo. En eso nos hizo uh, muy feliz porque en gratitud estábamos trabajando contigo y al saber que usted estaba tan contento en eso, tan, tan feliz, nosotros encontramos felicidad también en lo mismo. En eso nuestros papás saben esto Y siempre preguntan por mí cómo está la hermana Elisa, que era tu maestra. Pero ellos recuerdan mucho y hablan de lo que hemos hecho. Oh, I so wish I could understand those because just from your expression, it was a beautiful message, I'm sure, of love and gratitude to the people you worked with. Thank you so much, sister.